So Linux is not perfect. I don't think that anyone has ever claimed that Linux is perfect. I definitely haven't. There are many times, in fact, probably about three quarters of the videos on this channel are me complaining about Linux constantly. Now, just because I say Linux isn't perfect doesn't mean I don't like Linux, doesn't mean I don't love Linux, doesn't mean I would go use Windows full time if I had to, you know, like I'm not going to do that. I love Linux just the way that it is, but also I don't think that it's the perfect thing, right? It, it has room to grow, room to improve. So what I wanted to do today was talk about five things that I think Linux could do better. Now, if this topic sounds familiar, it's because I did something like this back in 2022, and I could title it something like five things I hate about Linux. Now, first off, Matt back then was much more prone to hating things all over the time, so I've, I've gotten a little bit away from that. But also, you know, I was much more nitpicky. I talked about SysTray icons and... Uh, a few other things that were just kind of, they were pretty weird. I think I've actually changed my mind on SysTray icons, to be honest with you. I kind of like them now. So I have flip-flopped on some of those things. But what I want to do today is talk about some more generalized things that I really feel that Linux could do better. So that's what we're going to do today. But before we jump in, if you leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It'd really help the channel. So first on the list is better window management. Now, when I say window management, this is going to be quite confusing for some people because I don't think that window management means the same thing for everyone. Some people consider it, you know, like a tiling window manager, that's window management. Some people think that having something like Windows Power Zones or whatever the hell they're called, that's window management. I don't know what it means. All I know is that Linux needs to be better at it. And that's wishy-washy, but the, one of the reasons why I think that it's true is that most people use a desktop environment. Also, most people tend to ignore workspaces. They don't really use virtual workspaces to their full potential. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, and it's not a generalized thing like everyone ignores workspaces, but if you're using a desktop environment, chances are you probably have a pile of windows. <laughs> like You just have a, a huge pile of windows that all the stuff is open, and you probably don't know where it is. You're using Alt-Tab all the time, and your management, your organization, suffers because of this big pile of windows. Linux could do better at helping you manage that type of situation. Things like Windows Power Zones, or again, whatever they're called, I don't know. When I say Power Zones, it's like the thing. There's actually a GNOME extension that kind of allows you to tile things, you know, by dragging them. Kind of like that, right? And while this stuff exists, none of it is default. The desktop environments themselves need to do a better job of helping people manage their windows. I really do think and feel this simply because people have more memory these days, which means they're leaving things run more than closing them. Now, that's, again, not everyone. Some people in the comments are just typing away right now, like, oh, I close things when I'm done with them. Maybe even the vast majority of people still do that, but still people are running more things at once than ever before. More people have multi-monitor setups, things like this, right? And the more complex your workflow becomes, the harder window management becomes. And I really do think that Linux could do better at helping people manage more than one window at a time. So that's number one on the list. Number two, and this is a oldie but a goodie, is better audio. Now, I have complained about audio for a long time in Linux. Like, and obviously, I'm not the only one. We've heard literally everyone talk about how audio has failed them at one point or the other. Now, for the most part, and I'm going to knock on some wood here. I can actually show you. See, uh, wood. Knock, knock. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, for the most part, Pipewire has been fairly stable for me for almost two years. It's kind of crazy how stable... Pipewire has been. Now, that doesn't mean that it hasn't had its flaws. The other day, it completely broke screen capturing on Wayland on OpenSUSE. Was down for over a day. I don't know what went wrong, but it was solved by an update. So, that's a screen capture thing that just happens to be controlled by Pipewire. But Pipewire itself, in terms of audio, has been very, very stable. So, what do I mean when, it's, when I say it could be better? Well, it still has some flaws. The biggest one that really bothers me is that it still switches inputs and outputs randomly sometimes. It's really, really weird that I can be using my computer, 
walk away from it for a little while, come back and find that all of a sudden my webcam is now the default default audio input. Like what? Why? Like I, I like that doesn't make any sense. Why did that happen? Why did that change happen? A lot of times it's because the microphone, you know, was unplugged or whatever, and it switched it, and then it doesn't remember once it was plugged back in that this was supposed to be default. That could be better. There are a couple other things, like better noise cancellation in some cases. I know that a lot of people can get really fancy with a noise cancellation in terms of pipe wire and pulse audio and stuff like that. Way more fancy than I get, which I, you know, should look into that. But making that kind of stuff easier would be better for a lot of people. I, I, and I think that leaving it up to certain applications, Discord, isn't necessarily the best thing because they don't always do the best job. So audio on Linux, still room to improve, though I will have to say that it has gotten way better over the last couple of years. The third one is really weird. <laughs> I am a big proponent of file managers. I like file, manag file managers quite a lot. And uh, I am a big proponent of Crusader. It's my favorite Linux app. I've talked about this many times over the course of the last couple of years. The problem I have is that Crusader is broken. And it makes me very, very sad. Like, very, very sad. Uh, image preview hasn't worked in a couple of months. Drag and drop out of Crusader has been really wonky ever since I switched to Wayland. It does have Wayland support. And you can, you know, finagle it to use Wayland a little bit better but drag and drop sometimes doesn't work. So I've had problems with Crusader. That's why, uh, why I've been trying to find something different. I've talked about Double Commander. I've talked about going to Dolphin. I've used Thunar for quite, you know, quite, a, while, quite a while. You know, I, I've been file manager hopping, trying to find a good one. And unfortunately, while Crusader I still believe is the best, it has problems. And therefore I think that file management, specifically file managers can do better on Linux. And I don't think that this matters to a lot of people, but for me, I need a perfect file manager. <laughs> like, I really need a, a file manager that does all the stuff that I want it to do. I need it to, to remember position. I need it to, it to do tabs really, really well. I need it to be split pane. I need it to have the option for single click to open uh, by default. If, if, if it's in the settings, I can handle that, but I'd like to be default, but whatever. You know, I need all these things. Now, this is very personal to me because I again, have a thing for file managers, but I don't think that there's a good file manager, not only on Linux, but anywhere, to be honest with you. F Finder on Mac is not good. Uh, Windows Explorer is, first off, it's on Windows, but also, you know, it's not good. So actually having a good way to manage your files in a GUI environment seems to be a rare thing, and I haven't found the perfect thing yet. Unfortunately, I don't think that it actually exists. And if I were a coding type of, you know, a developer, I could just say, I'm going to make my own. And maybe I'll learn how to do that someday. But as of right now, the uh, the best file manager just it doesn't really exist. And, and it hurts me to say because Crusader is just, oh, it's so close. But it's just broken lately, unfortunately. So there you go. The next one that I have on the list is consistency. Now, this is a nebulous term that is going to cause some pain for people because FOSS software and Linux in, in particular are things that are have developed this obsession with choice. Like, everything is about choice. You can choose whatever distro you want. Every distro does things a little bit differently, has different software installed, runs different desktop environments or window managers or whatever. Everything's its own little special snowflake. And that's fine. Like, I like Linux for those reasons. Like, I, I think that choice is a good thing. Uh, maybe overabundance of choice isn't a good thing, but for the most part, I think that it's good that we have a choice of distros and desktop environments and window managers and file managers and uh, file systems and all sorts of things. I like that we have choice for those things, but you can't deny that that lack of consistency does play into the fact that Linux is still as small as it is. Because you can't just say, you can't point to this is the way you do things we have a problem there, right? It's a one of those things that we've talked about for 30 years where, you know, the reason why some companies will never bring their software to Linux is because there's multiple different package formats and they'd have to choose one and there's not really a default one. So which one are you going to choose? And all these things, right? It's a problem. But even beyond that, for the user, if you switch to Linux and you say you end up on Ubuntu and 
you decide that you're going to then leave Ubuntu for, say, Fedora, regular plain vanilla f Fedora. Both of them use GNOME. Both of them do GNOME significantly diff differently than each other. That's just absolutely the case, right? So there's no, cons there's no real consistency there, and it means that every time you move from one distro to another, you're going to have to adapt, you're going to have to learn the new way of doing things. And that is not something that everyone is willing to do. Also, it's not something that everyone has time to do. So it would be nice if Linux could do just a little bit better in terms of consistency. It's not going to happen, unfortunately, because of the way open source software actually is, but it would still be nice if that was the case because it would just make Linux easier to use. It would also be more attractive to new users. So that's the second to last one on the list. And the last one on the list is more personal to my heart and one of the reasons why I'm making this video. I have a video editing problem. Now, I think that if you ask anyone the best open source video editor on Linux, they're going to say Caden Live. Like, it's not even really a competition. Every other open source video editor is subpar, to say the least. Now, all those developers work really, really hard, and I understand that. Video editing software is really hard to do well. Even Caden Live finds that to be true. It doesn't always do it well. Now, if you were to ask people who what the best video editing solution on Linux is, period, ignoring the FOSS part, some people would say DaVinci Resolve, some people would say Caden Live, some people would say Lightworks or whatever it is. You know, people have different ways of doing things, but I think that everyone would agree that the video editing solutions on Linux aren't great. DaVinci Resolve probably would be the best if it was easy to install and actually easy to use and actually get up and running and use, I should say. Like, probably once you get it up and running, using it just then becomes learning it, right? But actually getting it running on your system is damn near impossible. Like, <laughs> like it just is. There are certain ways you can do it, but it requires a lot of jumping through hoops. Sometimes it requires actually using DistroBox to use, which is, while I love DistroBox, I don't actually want to use it for my video editing software unless I absolutely have to. So Resolve has its issues, you know, and then Kaden Live, it's good, and then it's bad, and then it's good, and then it breaks, and then it's good, and then it breaks, and it's the KDE Plasma of video editing software, right? And, and it, for obvious reasons, it's done by the same kind of people, right? They're, they're, they're both using the same toolkits and stuff like that, and they, they have the same kind of frame of mind. The features are awesome, and you can just add everything in there, and things break all the time. In the last three months, Caden Live has broken for me at least five times. Uh, sometimes it's in manageable ways, things like not being able to open up a project and have it actually, you know, work. It was fine as long as I didn't open up any projects. I just, you know, started and finished, you know, while it was open. It, it's, it was a thing, right? Uh, the last thing that, I don't even remember the last one. Oh, the last one was a crash. Like, it just crashed on me for no reason. The thing is, is that it happens a lot, right? Over the course of the last six years of using Linux, the last four years of making YouTube videos, I can't even count the number of times that Caden Live has failed me. And it's disappointing because it has the most potential out of all of them. It's open source, has a ton, a ton of features. It does things really well when it works for the most part, you know, and you can customize it to your heart's content to make it look, feel, and work the way that you want it to. It's the ideal potential of a video editor. Unfortunately, it breaks all the time. And when you're doing this kind of, kind of stuff, you kind of need your video editor to always work. Now, there's probably someone in the comment section like, okay, oh, live works so okay for me. Well, you know, good for you. That doesn't mean it works for everybody. And unfortunately, my experience is that it's, you know, not as stable as I'd like to be. And one of the reasons why this has come up is because it has broken so far, I've actually decided I'm buying another computer and I'm going to run Windows on it so that I can actually use DaVinci Resolve or Premiere or something like that on a different computer to edit my videos. That's right. Video editing has driven me, driven me away from Linux. Like That's just the state of video editing right now on this platform. And that is depressing to say because I promised myself I would never own another Windows machine. And uh, I've broken that promise. I've already bought it. Like, it's it's on the way. It should be here tomorrow or uh, Monday or whenever it is. You know, and that's just, it's going to make me very, very sad. <laughs> I guess because I'm going to spend as little time on that box as possible. But 
I, I'm at the point where I can't trust Caden Live to be stable enough for me to do the work that I need to do. And unfortunately, I, I edit a lot of videos because I do this YouTube channel. I have plans of doing another YouTube channel eventually, and I need to be able to, to trust the thing that I, the tools that I need to use in order to do it. And unfortunately, I can't. So the last one on the list is video editing on Linux, and I wish, I really wish that it did it better. Now, I know, again, someone in the comment section is like, why don't you just try to get Resolve installed? I have, many times. I have got it to run on OpenSUSE, like open up, but actually past that of actually getting things to work, haven't got there yet. Maybe someday that won't be the, uh, you know, a problem. Maybe I'll just say screw OpenSUSE and just move to Rocky Linux, which is what the DaVinci Resolve team seems to want you to use, which is Rocky or CentOS or something like that. Why they chose such a, a corporate distro, I'm not sure. Why didn't they choose like Fedora or something, literally anything else? Like, <laughs> I don't know, but they did. So I, I don't know, maybe someday Resolve on Linux will be something that I can use. Right now it's not. And unfortunately, Caden Live isn't either. So that's the big thing that I had to complain about. All the rest of them, I do think Linux could do better but the video editing thing is the most personal one for me. So in the comment section below, I'd love to hear from you guys. What do you think Linux could do better? I'd love to hear from you. If you want to, you can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me at Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Thanks to everyone over here who does support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You guys are all awesome. I'm like, you know, petting you in a non-creepy creepy way. <laughs> I, again, not Vanna White. Um, not even close. Anyways, thanks everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the challenge would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So, so thank you so very much for that. You can also head on over to the shop if you want to support the channel. That's shop at thelinkscast.org. There you'll find a whole bunch of merch, which is all awesome. All the proceeds for that go directly towards helping the channel. Uh, so head on over there, shop at thelinkscast.org. Thanks everybody for watching. I will see you next time.